Hi, this is Lee. I was going to do a quick little video to show how you can make entwined letters. Um, I've just chosen a simple example, and what I mean by entwined is that, so here I just have my initials, and I have part of the W going over the L, and then I have part of the L going over the W, and then behind the W. So then this is, um, like if I pull the W part, you can see it's got a little cutout here where the L goes through, and then if I pull the L, you can see it's got a cutout where the W goes through. And so you could do something like this with vinyl. You could make your, your background and then make these two different colors to layer and then have these um, the, the shadow layers showing through. So I was just going to show how to do that. And you can get a lot more complicated than this, um, but this is just a simple, easy example just to show the basic technique. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got my letters typed in and I've got them sort of overlapped on top of each other. And sometimes you have to play with how they're overlapped. You don't want to, um, y you have to think about what parts are going to go over what other parts. And um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate each letter and make a shadow layer. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate the W. I'm going to change that duplicate to black and press end on the keyboard to send it to the back. And then I'm going to use path outset, which the keyboard shortcut is control close parentheses to make a shadow layer for that. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the L. Control D to duplicate. Down here on the color palette layer, change it to black. Press end on the keyboard to send it to the back. And then control close parentheses a couple times to make a shadow layer. Okay? So now you can see that I've got um, my two initials, um, but they're not entwined. The W is overlapping on top of the, the L. So what I want to do is I want to use these shadow layers I just made to cut pieces out of the other, and that will give me this, this border around them. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do right here, I've got the W going on top of the L. So I'm going to choose... Um, my W shadow layer, and to do that, if I just click on that, I get the top layer. If I hold down the Alt key and click again, I get the bottom layer. So now my shadow layer is selected. I'm going to duplicate that, Control D. Okay. Now I'm going to. I've got my fill and stroke panel open, and just to make it a little easier to see what I'm doing, I'm going to change the opacity of that shadow layer so that I can see through it. And I'm going to also zoom in a little. Okay. So now what I want to do, I want to use this shadow layer to difference out part of the L. If I was to use the entire shadow layer, select both of those and do path difference, then it cuts out um, oops, all of the pieces of the L where the W is going on top. And that's not what I want to do. I just want to cut out here so that the W is going on top of the L here, but not here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little shape here where the W overlaps the L, and I'm just using the Bezier tool to draw a shape, okay? So now with that shape selected, I'm going to hold down Shift and select also that shadow, that duplicate shadow layer, and I'm going to do Path Intersection, and that will erase all of that duplicate shadow layer except the parts where the two paths had intersected. Okay, so now that's just all of the shadow layer I have left. So I'm going to have that selected and hold down Shift and select my pink L and then just do Path Difference. Okay, now you can see that there's the W, it's still complete, and here's the L, it's got a piece of the W cut out of it. All right, now for this part, I want the L going on top of the W, so I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. I'm going to select that shadow layer, and if you have a hard time just getting it, remember, hold down the Alt key and click again, and then you select what's behind. Then Control D to duplicate. All right, now I'm going to go back over to my fill panel and change the opacity to around 50%. And now you can see the only part of that L shadow layer I want is this part here. So I'll just do the same thing. I'll take my Bezier tool and I'm just going to draw a box around that part that I need. Okay, then go back to selection. With that shape I just drew selected, hold down the shift key and select also the duplicate shadow layer, and then again, path, intersection. Okay, you can see all that leaves is the, sh the little piece of the shadow layer that I need. So hold down shift and also select the W, and now we'll do path difference. 
Okay, now you can see if I drag the W, you can see it's cut a little piece out of that. Okay, one last piece to do on this one. I'll have the, in this case, I'll have the W going on top of the L. And it's already going on top of the L, but I don't have a nice little shadow layer there, so I can fix that. Again, I will select just that back W shadow, duplicate it, make it a little bit uh, opaque so I can see through it. And now, same thing here, I'm just going to take the Bezier tool and just isolate that little part that I want. Hold down Shift and select the entire duplicate shadow layer and do Path Intersection. That just left that little bit. I'm going to hold down Shift and select the pink L and do Path Difference. Okay. So, there are my entwined letters. Now, if I was going to cut this um, with a Cricut or a Silhouette, right now the two shadow layers are separate. The L and the W are separate. I want to union those together, basically, so they're all one piece. So, I'm just going to use my plus key to zoom in and carefully select both of those shadow layers and union them. Um, you can do path union. I like to use keyboard shortcuts because it's quick. The keyboard shortcut for union is control shift plus. And now you can see that those two are together. That would cut as one black piece. And then I would have my pink piece to cut and my green piece to cut. And I'm doing control Z to put those back where they were. So there it is. And that's how you would do it. And you would just, you know, basically any letters or shapes, like I could do, um, I could use my Bezier tool and the, um, I'm going to change it to a spiro path and the ellipse. And I'll make like a little swirl. Okay. I could do the same thing. I could put that swirl going in and out between the letters, and I won't do that for this because that would take a long time. But you could do something like that, shapes, circles, um, arcs, um, any sort of little design that you want to put entwined with your letters. And sometimes if you've got a lot of, of objects that you're trying to entwine together, it can take a while to figure the pieces out. But that's just basically how you do it. Um, so if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Thanks for watching.